Hello and welcome to the channel. This is the second lesson of the Excel VBA tutorial for beginners. The first video was just an introduction to VBA. We saw some macro examples, we added the developer tab and explored the Visual Basic Editor. In this video we'll learn what are modules and procedures and we will create our first macro. Modules can be seen as folders of the VBA project that contain the executable code of macros in the form of pr procedures. There are different types of modules. And a procedure contains the executable code that performs a specific task. So there are also different types of procedures. There are sub-procedures or, or subroutines, function procedures, event procedures, etc. We're, we're going to see that in a moment. Let me show you all this in the Visual Basic Editor. As we've seen in the previous video, the VBA project window shows folders for each sheet in the workbook and also the folder this workbook. These are actually object modules, a special type of module, and they can contain procedures and code, which is specific to the respective worksheet objects or workbook object. But they usually contain only event procedures, which is a particular type of procedure that we will cover later. Most of the executable VBA code is written into standard modules, though. We refer to those simply as modules. A VBA project can include one or more standard modules, and each module can contain one or more procedures. Each procedure will have as many lines of code as needed. Let's insert a module here. We can either go to Insert Module up here, or click the quick access icon in the VBA editor. The module gets the name module 1, module 2, uh, module 3, etc. by default, but we can change that in the properties window. As you see here, there are other types of modules we can add. So on top of object modules and standard modules, the VBA project can also have class modules and user forms. The class modules are used to create classes that define objects, and the user forms add the layout and controls to build a user interaction form. We will cover that later in this tutorial. We can see all the modules in the VBA Project Explorer here on the left-hand side, while the space on the right-hand side is dedicated to the procedures and the code for the respective module. Now, to add a new procedure, we can go to Insert Procedure and then write the name of the procedure. The name must start with a letter, cannot have spaces, period, exclamation, or other such characters, and cannot exceed 255 characters. As you see, there are several possibilities here. So, there are different types of procedures, and procedures can also be public or private. I'll talk about that in a moment. Alternatively, we can also add a procedure manually by writing the statements in the module window. A procedure has an opening statement with the name of the procedure and a closing end statement. And anything in between is the executable code. For a normal subroutine or sub procedure, the most common type of procedure, the opening statement is sub followed by the name of the procedure. And the closing statement is end sub. And when we click enter, it adds the parentheses and the closing end statement. The parentheses are empty, but they can have parameters for a particular procedure. And now let's add some code. MSG box, hello. So, that was actually our first macro and consists of a sub procedure called my first macro within module one. An MSG box is the function to display a conventional Microsoft message box on the screen. When running the, the macro, it just displays the message hello. Now, back to the other types of procedures. The function procedures are similar to the sub-procedures with the peculiarity that they return a value. They are also called uh, just functions. 
often they are passed one or more values called arguments between the parentheses. Function procedures can be called out from other procedures such as for example a sub procedure and can also be used directly in the worksheet as any other Excel built-in function formula. Let's see an example of a function that converts Fahrenheit degrees to Celsius. So function temp Celsius or the temperature in Celsius and then in the parentheses it's going to get the temp Fahrenheit so the temperature in Fahrenheit and that's going to be as an integer D don't worry about that yet we will cover that very soon uh, that's the type of variable the type of data in that variable and Celsius temperature is going to be an integer as well now here we put the formula so we write the temp Celsius equals the temp, the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32, and that all divided by by 1.8, and we end the function. So, the function takes the temperature in Fahrenheit degrees and returns the temperature in Celsius. And we could now use it in, in any other macro. So for example, in our first macro above here, um, we're going to say now, hello, and uh, the temperature in Europe is, and let's say we know the temperature in, in Fahrenheit, um, but we want to display here the temperature in Celsius, so we write temp Celsius, which is our function, and in parentheses we write 90, and then when we run that macro, it's going to call the, the function, and finally it's going to display uh, the temperature in Celsius. We can also access that function as a formula from any cell in the, in the workbook. So if we have here the temperature in Fahrenheit, let's say column A, I'll, let's put F, we can get the temperature in Celsius in any other cell, let's say in column B, and then here we just use it as a, as a normal Excel formula. Temp Celsius, here we have it already, you see, and in parentheses we refer to the cell A2 here in column A, and then we get the temperature in, in Celsius degrees. As we have seen above uh, in the Add Procedure dialog box, there's another type of procedure. The property procedures are used with class modules to create properties for defined class objects. On top of those three, there's yet another very important type of procedure. That's the event procedure. Most of the times it specifically refers to the workbook on worksheet objects. And in that case, it can be inserted in the, this workbook and the respective sheet object modules. So these event procedures contain executable code that is triggered upon a particular event happening. So for example, event procedures in the workbook object module, uh, this workbook, respond to events such as a workbook opening or closing or changing the, the sheet selection in the workbook, etc. So le let's navigate to this workbook module and have a look here. We select workbook on the left and on the right we get the list of event procedures. By default, we, we always get the workbook open event procedure. That's probably the most commonly used. Uh, but we can add any other. Like uh, before close event, we just select and we can add it here. So now, any code here, let's, let's say here in the open workbook event procedure, will run whenever the workbook opens. So if we add a message box here, it will pop up when the user opens the file. 
So let's say MSG box, welcome to my file. If we close and open this this workbook, you will you will receive this welcoming message when you open the, the workbook. And the same we could do with, with before close. Uh, if we put any code here, um, before the workbook closes, it will run that code. Uh, similarly, the event procedures in the worksheet object module respond to events at the sheet level, such as sheet activation, uh, sheet range, or cell selection change, etc. Let's select the sheet object module and see the event procedures available for the worksheet object. So here we see uh, the list of event procedures, and that works exactly the same as, as with the workbook object. OK, um, as, as we've seen earlier, procedures can either be public or private. So public, uh, usually we write public SAP or just SAP. If we write just SAP, it means that's a public procedure. Um, they are available from any module uh, of the VBA project, or, or even from another workbook. But private procedures, so we write that with private SAP, um, they are only available within that particular module. So let me show you that. If we open another workbook, I have here book two, another workbook, and we go to the macros, we can see our, mac our my first macro that we created in book one. So you see it's available here, and we could run it, actually. OK. Now, if we set this instead of public, we set it to private, then we cannot see it any longer. In, uh, neither here. So we won't see it in book, in book two anymore, as you see. And also, even here, we won't be able to see it now. Now it's, it's only uh, private within that module. OK? So, uh, and the same for functions. So we can have public or uh, private functions as well. OK? Now, uh, the next thing we're going to cover is how, how to run a macro. And you've seen already a few, a few ways of doing that. Probably the most common way is to go to either uh, the developer tab or for users who don't have the developer tab, they can access the macros under the view tab here. And then view macros, it will pop this, uh, this box here with the available macros. And then you can run it. OK, and you can actually do other things. You can step into, we will look at, into that later in the, in the debugging lesson. But, um, and you can go right away to the Visual Basic Editor with the Edit button as well. Um, you can also, another way to do it, you can assign the, uh, a shortcut to run the macro. So for example, Control plus a letter in your keyboard. Sometimes I do Control M. Uh, to quickly run run the macros, yeah, you can run um, the macro that way. Um, there are there are other ways to to do it. Another way is using the play button here. We've we've seen it earlier. That's usually when you are testing or working on the macro, you you use this play button. This is part of the debugging tools, uh, together with the pause or break uh, and the and the reset button. Um, we can also add a button here. So if we go to the developer tab, we can insert a button here. As you see, when I insert the model, it immediately it asks me to to uh, assign a macro, because we have macro values, we can assign it right away, clicking OK. I'm going to cancel. We can also, let me change the text here and put, uh, this is my macro. And, and now we can right click on the, on the um, button and assign a macro here, you see? So we can assign the macro, and it will run when we press the, the button. And we can also assign it to a, to a shape. So we can add a shape here. Um, it looks similar than a button. We can write here uh, whatever, yeah, my macro. 
again, and, and then we right click and assign macro. And so we can also run it from, from a shape. So if we click the shape, it's running the macro. Um, we can also add it up here. If we right click on the, on the ribbon, we can uh, customize the quick access toolbar, which is that bar over there. And if you see here on the top, we can go to macros, and then here's our, our macro, my first macro. If we add it here and click OK, now here on the top, there is a new icon, and it's, uh, it's, it's to run our macro. So if we click here, we can run our macro again. Uh, and we can also uh, actually add it. Let, let me remove it from there. So we go back here, and I remove it from there. But we can now add it to the ribbon, like together with all these tabs here. So if we right click on the ribbon and say customize the ribbon, uh, as you see here, we have the, the tabs. We can select on the left um, the macros again. And here's our macro. But before we add it, um, we create a new tab. So we're going to add it in a new tab. So we go down here, we add a new tab. And then we need to create a new group as well which is already there. And now we can rename the tab as whatever we want. You know, we can say here, this is macros, for example. And then in, in, in this group, we're going to put our first macros. We, we're going to call it, we can call it first macros or whatever, you know. And now we select it and we add it there. And we can actually rename it or we can associate um, an icon to the macro. I don't know, we can put this smiley, OK? And then we click OK. And as you see here, we have a new tab next to the Developer tab, which it says Macros. And, and here we have our macro, my first macro with the smiley. If we click here, of course, it runs the macro. It's also important to mention that we can run a macro within the code. So let's say I'm in my, in, in my first macro, but we have a second macro, which is going to be, I'm going to put it here, it's going to be a sub my second macro. OK, and my second macro is going to say, it's going to display another message box say, saying, uh, this is my second macro. OK? so. When we run first macro and then we want to run the second, we have to add here uh, the call my second macro. Or we can, you can use the call or you can just uh, uh, write my second macro. So when we run now um, our first macro, and let's run it from any of these buttons here, it will show the message from the first macro, but then it will call the second macro, and, and, and it shows the message box from the second macro. OK, so I hope that um, that was useful. Um, we have covered modules, procedures. We wrote our first macro and even our second macro, and we learned the different ways to run a macro. In the next video, we're going to talk about the Excel object model. So I'll see you there.